Morning YouTube, Reef Rookie here. Today we're going to talk about clean water and why it's so important you buy something like this for your reef tank. Alright, so I was thinking about what to do my next video on and I figured let's get back to basics. And uh, what's more basic than water when it comes to the fish tank or reef aquarium hobby? I mean, let's face it, without water Nothing's going to survive in your tank. So a lot of people ask, I notice on the forums, should I buy an RODI water, water filter? Where do I get RODI water? Can I use tap water? There's a million questions out there online and people ask all the time, what's the best thing to do? My opinion, the best thing to do is go out and spend a little upfront money on something like this, a nice RODI filter. And here's why. There's several, there's several ways you can fill your tank. Using One would be tap water. Um, you have no idea what's in that tap water. You can get your report from your local water supply, your local, you know, water treatment plant, but you're going to have chlorine, chloramine, heavy metals, silicates, any of that stuff is, is just horrible for your tank. And you don't want it in there because it's going to cause outbreaks of algae, cyanobacteria. It's just going to make a na nasty environment of your tank. Plus, it's not healthy for your fish. Chlorine, chloramine, those are all deadly. So you're going to spend 50 bucks on a fish and throw them in a tank full of tap water and a couple days later he's dead you're gonna wonder why um, so tap water is really not my favorite I filled my tank when I first got in this hobby with um, tap water before I got an RODI unit and I used tap water with a dechlorinator and it was a pain in the neck um, my water was never really clean I had algae all the time my fish weren't happy it was just a nightmare um, some people can use well water uh, very similar to tap water with the same issues and you have you know a higher risk of heavy metals and, and uh, real alkalinity problems with the water um, supermarkets sell distilled water you know they're available from the stores and they're supposedly pure but how do you know because it says it on the back of the bottle that this distilled water is super pure and safe to drink and safe to put in your fish tank and then there's RODI reverse osmosis distilled water um, even there's an issue there. If you don't have your own filter, you go to your local fish store and you take their word for it that, yeah, it's, a, it's RODI water, but when did they change their filters last? Two years ago? Um, you kind of take their word. If you trust the guy, if you use the business, if you use that store a lot, it's, it might be worthwhile, but there's always going to be that thought in the back of your mind, how clean is this water? H how am I doing this? Um, look at their look at their tanks. Is there a lot of green hair algae outbreaks in a lot of their tanks? Is there algae everywhere? Does the water look really good, pristine? If there's a lot of algae in their tanks, you may think to yourself, hmm, maybe their filters need to be changed, and uh, I'm not really getting pure RODI water. Now, believe me, I thought long and hard before I spent the upfront money on one of these RODI units. Like I said, I used tap water to save money, and I was a complete newbie at this hobby. Um, but it really, it, it cost in the long run. I had a lot of, I had fish die on me. I had terrible water. Like I said, I had algae outbreaks. So wh why, why would you spend upwards of a couple hundred dollars on one of these RODI units? Um, I think, I want to say this one was $199 on sale at, at Bulk Reef Supply. Um, I, a lot of people go to the local fish store and get the, get the, uh, water, like I said. But think about that. My local fish store is a half an hour away the one that I'd like to deal with. And, and it's worth, believe me, the store is, it, is great. It's worth the trip. That's the only place I go to unless I'm buying online. Now, a half hour away, you're spending gas money, you're spending time. That's at least an hour's worth of travel. Now, you got to transport the water. So you, you're putting water in five-gallon buckets. You're driving down the highway. Water's sloshing around in your car. Uh, it's, you know, what's your time worth? What's the aggravation worth of lugging five-gallon buckets? And how many five-gallon buckets are you going to get? To bring home, travel a half an hour, or even if your store is 15 minutes away, it's just kind of a hassle. You pay, and you're paying the local fish store for their water that you don't even really know if it's if it's clean. Um, so so there's another factor, you know, time and money. What's it worth? How long will it take to recoup the money back, the $199? Well, there's a couple other factors. Peace of mind. Um, you know exactly what's in your water. You know it's pure. Now this particular unit has a uh, has a meter on it, a TDS meter, and that tells me I can check the water going into the filter, what TDS it has, 
And TDS, for those of you who don't know, stands for Total Dissolved Solvents. And I can flip that little switch and I can tell what the uh, TDS is coming out of the filter. And it should read zero, and it does right now. This, all the filters are brand new and it's running really well. So I have this unit, and it's Friday. Uh, excuse me, no, it's Thursday. The kids are at school, and I think I'm running low on RODI top-off water. Do I want to drive to the local fish store, fill up a bunch of gallon, five-gallon buckets? No. I have the peace of mind, and I can go throw this, throw this hooked up, fill a couple bottles or a couple buckets whenever I want, and I have the peace of mind that I have as much water as I, I need. Say, for example, you have a problem with your tank, you have some sort of... Um, you know, a leak or uh, something happens where you need a, a, a lot of RODI water and it's 9 o'clock at night and the local fish store is closed, what happens then? You have some sort of outbreak in your tank, you need to fill up a quarantine tank. Um, any, any of these weird things can happen in this hobby. And if you don't have the water, if you don't have the ability to make the water, you're going to be sitting around all night wondering if your fish are going to survive, your corals are going to survive. And for some of you out there, that's a pretty substantial investment to uh, to risk. Um, if you have your own RODI unit, throw it on, hook it up, fill up some buckets, and there you are. You have you have RODI unit water or RODI water. Now, when you're buying one of these things, think about a couple of factors. Um, what's the gallon per day? Uh, how much do I want to make in a short amount of time? Is it a water saver unit? Um, do the, are the canisters clear? Uh, there's a lot of things to, to factor in. I like the fact that my canisters are clear because I can see what's going on in my filters. I can tell when they really, you know, if they're starting to get dirty, they'll need to be changed. A lot of these filter units just have these white tubes or sumps, I guess you call it, and you really can't tell what's going on inside. So the things I like are the clear, clear um, canisters so I can see the filters. I have a water saving unit. So this one does actually 150 gallons a day, and it's got uh, a, a low amount of wastewater. Uh, I fill up a five-gallon bucket in about an hour and a half, um, as opposed to my old unit. It would take several hours to fill up a five-gallon bucket, and wastewater was just going down the drain, or it just felt like I was lo losing a lot of money. Um, like I said, I got the TDS meter on there, and I got the I got the pressure gauge, so I can tell the pressure coming into the unit. This is just a nice overall unit. I recommend it from Bulk Reef Supply. That's just my opinion. There's hundreds of different units out there um, that you can buy. So basically, what's peace of mind worth? Okay. And what's it worth knowing that you can make it anytime you want? And what's it worth knowing that you know exactly what's in your, your water? So the importance of RODI water is huge. I will tell you though, keep after the filters. Don't let them get dirty because my old filter unit, like I said, it was just these white filter sumps and I didn't really keep track of when it need, when they needed to be changed and they got dirty and I had a lot of TDS going into my tank and I had an enormous green hair algae outbreak. Um, my The whole back of my tank was covered in long green hair algae. It just looked horrible. The clownfish liked it because I think they started hosting it actually, but it just looked horrible and it was driving me crazy. So I got the new unit. I had pristine water going in. I had pristine top tap, uh, yeah, top off water going in. Water changes, and I was dosing with the no pox, and my skimmer was running well. And it took a couple weeks, but the green hair algae is gone from my tank. I still have a little bit on my rocks, but um, I really, I realized the importance of pristine RODI water in my fish tank. So, if I can give you any advice, if you're just starting out, or if you're not just starting out, and you're buying your water, or you're using tap water. Go out and spend the money on one of these units because it's going to make life a lot easier. You just fill up the buckets and you have RODI unit water on hand when you need it. So, um, that being said, um, I had a question about how I'm raising the salinity in my quarantine tank because if you guys watch my other videos, you know my bicolor angelfish is still in quarantine and I did the hypo salinity routine with him and he's been in there about four weeks and I'm slowly raising the salinity. Up. So I'm going to pause here and we'll go take a look at him and see what's going on. Stay tuned. All right, there he is. He's doing good. Look at him. So I'm finished with hyposalinity. He's doing good. He's eating. Didn't get too much stress. I didn't really even notice any stress on his part. His appetite never went away. Uh, the water quality was good. 
So I showed you guys how I lowered the salinity. I did, you know, a couple gallon water change and got the salinity to 1.009 and uh, went from there and kept it constant for about three and a half weeks. Now, how do you get it back up there without freaking the fish out? Well, basically, it's, it's real simple. I mixed a, uh, a bucket of tank water, fresh, fresh salt water at 1.025, and I'm just topping off with that 1.025 water for the evaporation because as you know salt is a solid and when the water evaporates the salt stays in the tank and the water goes out so believe me it doesn't take long to raise the salinity when you're topping off with 1.025 tank water um, this is probably day four and I think today's probably gonna be the day that it gets back up to 1.025 and that's when I'll get rid of the seawater or the uh, salt water and we'll start topping off with fresh water and keep him in there for a couple more weeks. Now that he's done with his um, hyposalinity, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the carbon out of the filter, and I'm going to give him a couple weeks with Prazapro, and observe him, and he'll be in the display tank in about two more weeks. You can use Prazapro with hyposalinity, but uh, I'm I'm running carbon with that with while I did the hyposalinity just to keep the water clean. And as you can see, you know, from my ammonia badge, there's no ammonia. Um, a, a quick tip though, aerate that water while you're raising the salinity because it, uh, the oxygenation makes it possibly difficult for the fish to breathe in there while you're raising the salinity. That's, that's one of the downfalls of raising it back up. So don't raise it too fast. And uh, there we have it. So today he's going to be back up to about 1.025. And a couple weeks, he'll be back in the display tank. So anyway, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are, anything. Ask questions. If you guys have anything you want me to do a video on, put it in the comments below, and um, I'll be happy to do a video. I, I, I really welcome the criticism, too. I really I welcome that. I, if I'm doing something that you guys don't agree with, bring it on. Put it in the comments, and, and let's, let's talk about that, because believe me, I'm no, I'm no marine biologist here. I'm just a guy doing the hobby just like you guys. And uh, if you like the video, please like it so that I can stay up in the YouTube rankings. And uh, I got I only need like 24 more subscribers till we have the free subscriber giveaway from the Reef Rookie. So hit that subscribe button and be entered for my mystery gift. And I promise it'll be something good. You guys will like it. It's not going to be something lame. All right? So Reef Rookie, signing out. Later.